right, shalom everyone. I'm Paul Roy. Brother Anthony, shalom guys. And this is Two Men the Torah. So here, we, I know we uh, are doing it every other Tuesday. We were supposed to be last week, but we were off on the road. So, um, so we just pick up where we left off. All right. So tonight, as as we all, as everybody's been following, anyways, knows that we are testing Paul's letters to Torah due to you know so many in the messianic hebrew roots who are trying to mislead people by declaring that paul's writings are false and that they're false doctrine yet and that paul teaches against torah so we are going through all the letters of of paul and we're going to let the scriptures speak for themselves of course and Amen. see exactly what paul actually does say compared to how people like to take his scriptures out of context. So, uh, Shalom, David and Michelle, Donna Goodluck, Shalom, Chucky, Shalom. All right, so with that said, we are going to read uh, Romans chapter 13 and 14. And um, next week or the week after, we will finish Romans chapters 15 and 16. So there we go. Awesome. So, who's reading which first? Um, you want to read 13? Yeah, sure, I can, I can read. Alright. Alright, so Romans chapter 13, starting verse 1. It says, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from Elohim, and the authorities that exist are appointed by Elohim. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of Elohim. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to do a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is Elohim's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is Elohim's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this you also pay taxes, for they are Elohim's ministers, attending continually to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due, tax, due taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the Torah. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying. Namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the Torah. So all of these verses that we see Paul literally citing Torah, literally citing the, the Ten Commandments and the Shema, the same in the same manner that Yeshua did, and I've said this in, in in prior episodes of this series that Paul Paul's teachings um, echoed Yeshua's teachings. Paul's teachings echoed the Torah, um, and just like Yeshua said in Matthew five seventeen uh, through nineteen, do not think that I came to abolish the Torah, but to fulfill it. He came to show us how to live, how to walk in it, how to bring back the spirit of the Torah. Um, and Paul is, is, is doing the exact same thing here. He's bringing back the love, the spirit of the Torah. We know that, that the Torah, the heart of it is love. It's love for Yah and love for our neighbor. And so Paul's echoing uh, the exact same thing. Hang on a second. I think we're disconnected. Keep going. Okay. All right, verse 11. I said, Go ahead. It says, and do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is near, than we were first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. 
Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Adon, Yeshua, HaMashiach, and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So that was chapter 13. Before Brother Paul reads, I want to I want to briefly touch on a few verses here. Um, yeah, I got one I want to touch on too. So if we go back to the beginning of the chapter, um, and kind of just taking a, a little curve here for a second, um, we, we read about being subject to the authorities, subject to the governing authorities. Um, it's, it's interesting how, and we can look at this in the Greek here, but it talks about, it says, For he is Elohim's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. So it, as far as an authoritative position is concerned, who is Elohim's minister whose duty it is to execute wrath on those who are sinning? On those who are being evil and bringing sin to the camp. Who's, whose job is that? It's the Levites, right? It's the Levites. It's the priests. Just like I was just reading this story the other day. I think it's in Numbers uh, 30, 25 or 35, one of those. But ba the story of Phineas, when, when um, a certain man of Israel brought a Moabite woman for Israelites to say, you know, hey, let's marry these women. These women are good. You know, let's marry them. And Yah had told them specifically not to marry outside of Israel for that time. And he brought a, woman, a Moabite woman before the tabernacle. And Phineas took a spear or a sword, I think it was, and stuck it in the both of them. Cut them down. Why? Because they were trying to approach Yah's holy tabernacle with profane things. And it was his job to to cut them down. You know, just like... Uh, the other the other example with the golden calf, who was it that had to cut down their brothers? It was, it was the Levites. Yes. So so with that being said, I think because a lot of people will say um, that this this applies to you know any government, and I agree it does. It, it applies to Caesar for them in that time, like Yeshua said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, respect the the authority that that has been um, put over your life. Um, that's what Paul's telling us here, but I also think that this is also saying we, it, it's speaking of the Levites and respecting the 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 authority that's in Torah first. And what I'm what I'm getting at is yes, we obey the laws of the land. Yes, we obey the laws of man to honor God, um, but we always first and foremost obey the laws of Yah first. We obey the laws of Torah. We obey the commandments just like Daniel did. Um, just like the three Hebrew boys did, uh, we always obey the laws of the Torah, the commandments of Yah before the commandments of men. And even if it's going to put us in prison or if it's going to put us, uh, you know, at, at, at the, the, gu the, gu the guillotine, uh, guillotine, the guillotine, thank you, guillotine, guillotine, uh, it doesn't matter. We have to be willing to obey the commandments of Yah first and obey the, the Torah and his word over man's word. Um, in the same sense, in the same scripture, Paul's saying, you know, God's the one who raised up every king in the earth. So, um, I mean, Daniel was favored by by the Babylonian king. He showed him respect. He followed their 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 rules as long as they didn't conflict with Yah's rules. He followed their rules. You know what I mean? So that's and what Yah even commanded Israel to subject themselves unto uh, the king of Babylon. He right. said. And he even told the the prophet to go and tell the people in Israel to yeah um, that's right yeah you know, build your right. homes yeah have families have, have families Plant. do all this yeah. stuff because you're gonna be here a while exactly and um, I just yeah you know, I think that you know a lot of people who are very anti-government for good reason I mean there's a lot of corrupt governments out there but there are people who take it to the extreme I mean you and I know a few people who completely just renounce everything that they've been um, handed down in their life and go off grid and, and tell others that they're sinning if they're not living the way they oh, are. Yeah. And it's like, come on now. Look, if yeah, you want you have a driver's license, you're breaking the Ten Commandments. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, it's like okay, okay if, yeah, if you want to go off grid and, and do that, you know, fine for you. But don't go around telling people that you're in sin or that you're breaking Torah just because they're not living the way you live because... The word speaks for itself. Right. The word shows us to respect authority um, 
like you just said, perfect example. Even when Daniel was in Babylon, Yah told him to respect the Babylonian authority for that time. So that's one thing. I meant to be a lot shorter with that, but I wanted to cover that really quick because that's well, what the chapter was about. I want to touch verse 2 also. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of Elohim, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Yeah. Well, how is Paul talking about Torah when right here in this verse he's saying that if we resist the authority, right. we resist the ordinance of Yah? Well, what's the ordinance of Yah? Mm -hmm. What throughout all scripture is pertained to the ordinance of Yah? Mm -hmm. Torah. My ordinances, my Amen. statutes, my decrees, all of those are in the Torah. They're not anywhere else in scripture. That's right. They're in the Torah. They come from the Torah. Everything is in the Torah. Amen. And so... So if we resist, and these people who speak against the authorities and stuff, yeah, like you just said, yes, there ain't a government on this planet that's not corrupt. Right. Every nation's government is corrupt, plain right. and simple, including right here in Israel. Right. The, the governments are corrupt, but that's not for our place to judge or, or anything else. We, as long, just like you made the perfect example with Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar, as long as they're not telling us to do something that is contrary to the commandments of Yehovah, we are to obey the laws of the land. Yeah. Plain and simple. Yeah. Yah will sort that stuff out, but we are to do what he tells us to do. He has put the governments in their place, who they are, who's who, and what's what, for his purpose to fulfill his purpose. Yeah. We pray for these leaders. We lift them up in prayer and everything else like we're supposed to do. But Paul's telling us right here, says it. Yeah. If we resist the authority, we resist the ordinance of Elohim. Now, I already know that there'll be some. I've seen it happen before. Oh, this ain't the authority. It's not the authority over the land. That This authority is corrupt now. And all. It's like, man, the authority's been corrupt all the way back to the beginning of time. Ever since man fell yeah. and got booted out of the garden, every authority of every nation has been corrupt. There has been a small handful of kings of all the kings of Israel who weren't corrupt. Right. And even those who Yah blessed, even many of them still had some things wrong. Um, who, like, uh, what was it? I'm probably wrong. We, You and I have been reading Kings, so we've got so many Kings in our head right now. But Josiah is one of the good ones. Yeah, Hezekiah, Josiah. Hezekiah. Now, Hezekiah, he took care of it. He tore down everything, right? Hezekiah tore down quite a few, um, but, then he died. Then Josiah came and slaughtered all the priests. Right, but Josiah didn't down. tear down all the asterisks, right? Or the altars. One of them, King Hezekiah or Josiah, or one of those. Oh, Hezekiah came, tore them down, and then Hezekiah's son Manasseh came and rebuilt them right back up. Yeah, right. but I'm talking about the, the kings that actually lived in obedience to Yah. Right. They obeyed the Torah, yeah. they obeyed Yah. But even some of those kings who walked in the obedience of Torah didn't tear all the altars or all the asterisks down from the king prior. Right. Some of them left them up. And so, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so even there, there's a, there was a piece of corruption because if they'd have been fully in obedience, they would have tore all that stuff down, burned it all to the ground and everything. And there was only a couple kings, yeah. literally a couple, that right. actually did all of it right, that actually kept Torah and destroyed everything pagan, yeah. everything against Yah in the land, destroyed it all, burned it to the ground and everything. So... I mean, so the corruption, Mishbaha, is across the board, and Paul's telling us here, if we resist the authorities, we resist the commandments of Yehovah. Yeah. We, then we, so why, again, so to what this whole purpose is of why we're reading this, how is Paul teaching against Torah when he's, he's telling us right here, you're breaking Torah right. if you resist the authorities exactly. over you. Exactly, yeah, amen. So, amen. all right, chapter, were you done? Sir. All right, so chapter 14. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to dispute over doubtful things. For one believes he, he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. And let not him who does not eat him 
and let not him who does not eat, or I missed the word judge there, judge him who eats. For Elohim has received him. Who are you to judge another servant to his own?